That and control multiple. <clears throat> well, good evening and welcome to the special meeting of the City Council for March 19th, 2019. Would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> All right. Okay, we're here for a study session for the uh, Gateway Program and Triangle Project Briefing. First, we'll have a staff introduction by Desiree Winkler, our Deputy Public Works Director. Desiree? Good evening, Mayor, Deputy Mayor, members of Council. Really briefly, it does seem like City of Federal Way is the center of the universe when it comes to infrastructure. Uh, it seems like a great time to get an update from Washington State Department of Transportation regarding the Gateway Program and the Triangle Project so that you can see kind of how everything's fitting together and know that everybody's working together. So um, without further ado, uh, Craig Stone, who's been here before, the program administrator for the Puget Sound Gateway Program is here, and along with his colleague, Hung Hun, the engineering manager for Northwest Region, will give you those updates. Craig? All right. So I think you can Craig? arrows and then okay. this will get right. you going. Well, good evening. Uh, good to be back. I think it was last spring uh, that we gave you an update. So Desiree contacted us and said we should uh, come over and uh, give you a little bit of update. So most of this actually is gateway program because that's where things have been happening. Hung will give you a little bit of update on the Triangle Project, but there's actually not a lot of actions have changed since the last time we presented to you. So, so just kind of from a time standpoint. Um, yeah, correct. You. Uh, Federal Way is definitely in the center of this. Uh, we have projects to the north that will come down to Star Lake. We have projects to the south that we effectively tie into the, to the Triangle area. So uh, we definitely are on a way to complete uh, 509 and complete 167. Uh, but also I-5 is just critically important to how transportation works. And, and as you well know, I mean, it's the lifeline of the West Coast. Um, the gateway program by the legislature is, is definitely a freight uh, connections to our port. Some people call it the last mile connections. We have a lot of support from Eastern Washington, the apple growers, fruit growers, potatoes, wheat, uh, even uh, a great northern corridor from Chicago all the way as they see how products actually get to the Asia market. And so this is gets into not only um, family wage jobs for construction, but this is family wage jobs also for the ports and those who work in the, in the industrial uh, and manufacturing areas. Um, so that's the focus. Now, we have a video here. Desiree says it works, but it might be a little bit lagging, so we'll see how this works. We've been building transportation infrastructure in Washington State for well over a century. We have 18,000 miles of road, we have thousands of bridges, and what we need to do as an agency is think about strategic investments in adding capacity. As this region grows, roads are more congested, uh, railroads are more congested, there's more people. Eastern Washington products, the hay, the apples, the cherries that hit foreign markets need to be able to hit our gateways in a timely fashion so they can be shipped overseas. We are two shipping days closer to Asia than any other market and that in the world of shipping is huge. If they are not able to get the product from our warehouse in Kent to wherever it needs to go in time, it stops their production, it stops all of those things. Time is important for our industry. We spend billions of dollars sitting in traffic idling. The 509 corridor around the south end of SeaTac Airport and the 167 corridor between Puyallup and the Port of Tacoma are links that have been missing in our system and uh, we're getting ready to uh, close those gaps. It truly is a connection for this whole entire side of our region. You will be able to get from Seattle, Tacoma in a pretty seamless way and there's options for folks. Investment in transportation infrastructure pays one of the highest returns. We really have four key areas of funding coming in. About three quarters of it comes in from the gas tax. We have a local contribution coming from the cities, from the counties, from the ports themselves. We also have tolling where the users will actually help pay for this facility and then we'll have a federal component coming into it too. It's going to drive economic development. It's going to drive new jobs estimated to produce 80,000 jobs. This is a statement of hope for the future and a willingness to invest in the future. And that's a very powerful statement for any nation or any state.
this. Very laggy. Uh, <laughs> if you want to see it in real time, it's on our website. And so you can click onto it very easily. So if anybody's watching and want to look at it. Um, so that gives you a feel for it. And I think what's been incredible on this project is we have really broad support. Uh, you can see here from the folks, uh, but also, you know, as we think about Tacoma, Pierce County, up to King County, up to Iberian, and all the cities and jurisdictions in between, we really have had a lot, a lot of support for this program moving forward. So this kind of just summarizes a little bit of the, what the video just showed you here as we're looking at this. Um, I would think from Federal Way's point of view, clearly I-5 is a critically important, how this ties into I-5. Uh, the intent here also is to reduce congestion on local roads. These are two facilities that don't exist. They haven't existed. Uh, we've been working on them since the early 90s, and that will help provide an alternate route so for people to be able to use uh, to get to where they want to go. Um, I put this one in here, um, pulled it back out. The, the width of the lines, those yellow lines, is actually, if you look at the number of trips, and so we'll use 167, where are they coming and going, the new section, and the number of trips off of 509, where are they coming and going? And you can see we're really going to be affect travel from Seattle to all the way to Tacoma. Uh, but I-5, again, is a very component backbone to that. Some great statistics up there. I mean, the ports here are the fourth largest in the nation. We compete with Savannah. Uh, or who is? No one competes with Long Beach, L.A., and, and New York, New York, Port of New York. But you look at the Kent, Sumner, Puyallup, kind of that area I look at, second biggest warehouse and distribution centers on the West Coast, fourth largest in the nation. Uh, so there's a lot of goods coming out of here. One of the fun facts we came up with, half of the Ace Hardware's goods come in through the ports and goes to Kent to be distributed out to, to the country and so forth. And then you have goods coming in from Caterpillar, from Genie, from... Um, uh, John Deere going out to Asian markets, you know, so there's a lot of goods that do obviously come through here uh, looking at it. The airport's large, obviously growing very quickly, and then we're doing this in the idea of trying to support the centers, which Federal Way is one of the urban centers along with our industrial manufacturing centers too, so that gives them viability. Um, the legislature, when they move forward with this, uh, there's a long history going all the way back to 1991 uh, to develop these corridors. Uh, they did not move forward, uh, but was effectively in the 2015, the legislature did act on a, on a gas tax program, and uh, the 509-167 gateway program is the largest funded in this. I've also heard just recently from legislative leadership saying that package may not have passed if this had not been a part of that project to actually lead that going through. So you can see where the support has been uh, through Olympia for that. Um, structurally, uh, we do have an exec committee and we have a steering committee. Appreciate Desiree coming uh, to some of our steering committee meetings and uh, the mayor has come to some of our exec committee meetings. But really it's a forum for us with 25 jurisdictions, agencies, uh, with the transit agencies, even our federal partners to work together and we've been trying to work with the consensus uh, in that process going forward. And with that, then public outreach, whether it's through uh, webs, outreaches or just talking with folks in their community or having public meetings and bringing that uh, forward. And we're really st focusing on trying to be inclusive as much as we can, even to populations that don't under have English as a primary language, because uh, we know we're affecting people's lives and we know how we're affecting how they travel. Um, stepping back a little bit, the legislature asked us to develop a construction implementation plan. We worked with those committees and we worked through this and we submitted this in September. So actually, uh, since last time I was here, this is one of our deliverables that we had to the legislature. Um, and effectively, it said, this is the project we're going to build. And it's really about half the money if you, we would have gone back, gone to what we call our full environmental impact statements about 15 years ago. The legislature gave us about half what we needed. We said, what's the essential needs? What's the functions we actually have to have? And that's what these are. So uh, on 509, you start off by the airport on the very right-hand side there. It's, um, you come up 509, come across the First Avenue South Bridge. Uh, now we have the 99 tunnel open, so that kind of gives you that west side expressway. Um, we will take from 188th Street, swing underneath and behind, you might say, the airport there. Um, there will be a new interchange, it's really hard to see, called 2428. There's a lot of warehousing going in in the SeaTac Des Moines area there. And then we tie into I-5 around uh, 210th Street, come down to the State Route 516. We then continue in Auxiliary Lane down to Star Lake at 272nd. Uh, the colors are called out by stages. Uh, you can see the light blue stage 1B. That should go to contract here in the summer of 2020, so effectively next, next summer. 
uh, and that will be what we will build first. Uh, I shouldn't say first, but that would be our next big project coming forward. Stage twos come later, 2026 to 2031, based off the current cash flow the legislature has given us. And I'll come back to that in a moment. With Sound Transit, as they're building their uh, Federal Way Link Extension, as you're very aware of that, and look, starting at Inca Lake Station and continuing with the stations coming down to Federal Way, they are actually going to be building walls, doing earthwork, and building a bridge for us at Highway 99 that we're coordinating with them on. And there, and tomorrow is actually the day they receive their proposals in from their three shortlisted firms. And then by April, they'll look to who they want to work with. And then uh, my understanding is by summer, they will be underway with the notice to proceed. So this is pretty immediate for moving forward, but there are parts of 509. There's 60 parcels here between Sound Transit and WashDOT that have to come together as exchanges for us to be able to work with this sound transit selected the 509 route down to i5 so we are joined at the hip on every little piece there and, and walls and properties as we go so we're coordinating very very closely with them um next one i'll just this is my my slide for sound transit um and with those stations so really we'll we'll stay in real close in touch with them down to 272nd beyond that then uh, effectively they'll continue to obviously state right away down to the federal way station this is a, just a graphic of uh, looking forward and looking north towards the airport on your left you see i5 on your right this is the new alignment coming south of the airport you can look real closely you can see the light rail uh, right where highway 99 is in SeaTac. Um, 509 goes underneath highway 99 Sound Transit goes right over it. That's the reason we're having Sound Transit build that because it's a very complicated. Once they build that bridges with all the columns, it would be very difficult, difficult for us to get in there. So we think it's, it's more effective, more efficient to come and do that. You can see we then have some additional uh, improvements along I-5. The next slide will take you for a little bit further south, uh, down to the Kent area um, and where the 516 interchange is. You can see the Kent Des Moines station there to the left. And then just taking that a little bit further, it's not very dramatic, but there'll be additional lane then coming down to the, the Star Lake area as Sound Transit uh, builds their, their station there. So that's what our project entails uh, from the 509 side. Um, from the 167 uh, down in Pierce County, we pick up in, in Meridian area, just north of uh, the, the Puyallup River in Puyallup, and uh, we'll come over uh, with a half interchange at Valley, come over to I-5, there's what we call a diverging diamond interchange at I-5. Effectively, be, there'll be two signals there, and it's, but this will be a, a new concept for driving. There's a brand new one being built down in Lacey, but this probably will be the second one in the state of Washington. There's about 60 of them around the country. They're much more efficient than traditional interchanges, but they're a little bit awkward because as you drive up to them, you actually go to the opposite side of the, of the bridge, and then you come back again. It drives really nice because you're not really thinking about it too much, but when you actually sit back and look at it, you just went on the opposite side. Uh, and, but it, it helps us save uh, traffic signals, uh, signal hut timing, and they're very efficient and they're also very safe. So that's, it's been a good design. And then we swing over and we tie into 509 uh, around Taylor Way as, we, as we're over there by the Port of Tacoma. That whole stretch there is about a six miles in, uh, in, in, in length. Uh, our first project, here is what we call stage 1A, which is, is this pretty simple bridge going over I-5 and 5. Uh, we've now selected three contractors. We uh, ha will have them give us proposals, and by this summer, we hope to be under contract with them. So we are also underway with that. Uh, stage 1B would then go to construction in 2021. But again, the purple, stage 2, does not go to construction until 26 out to 31, again, based off what the legislature has given us for funding. This is then the options for the Tacoma Dome link extension coming out of Federal Way and then coming out of the, your, your, your south part of the, your, your, the Federal Way into the Fife. And so we'll be working with them as to how we cross and how we accommodate and how we work the, with, the, with that station location that will be there uh, in Fife. This is just a graphic of that area um, to the I-5 Fife area and going over towards the Port of Tacoma Road how the 509 spur will, will tie into that, okay? Things I worry about, funding. Um, we're still working on that. We have state funding for the gas tax, uh, 1.5 billion. Uh, we have local contributions, we'll have to speak to in a moment. Um, we have 180 million coming through tolling. 
And then we have an actual grant that we just submitted on March 4th back to the United States Department of Transportation for the, for the Trump administration to consider uh, for $90 million. So we're, we'll be looking and waiting to see where that, where that grant goes. Um, looking at the contributions, um, appreciate the City of Federal Way participating with this and in, in, in working with us on the local contributions. And that was a reason for us to be here uh, last spring. But uh, we did uh, sign that on June 28th and deliver that to the legislature. Um, here, the mayor uh, signed on uh, for, for the city of Federal Way, but to get 19 jurisdictions to align, and what I thought was amazing, not one council member voted or, or, or spoke against entering into this agreement. So there was a lot of consensus, uh, again, from, the, from Tacoma all the way to Burien, including the two councils and the port commissions. Um, this is just how the uh, numbers have worked out. Um, if you remember, we had uh, agencies that our jurisdictions were contributing directly, others that would be supportive. Federal Way was in that area to support grants, but not actually provide a, a cash or a contribution to this. But you can see here we have 74 million that have, have worked out. Um, and then here are the different grants that we pursued. Actually, the grants on the right, 14.4. So during the calendar year 2018, since we signed this, we were able to get 14 million already put in place with matching money. We're up to 30 million already. Uh, for moving. So we're pretty pleased with the uh, progress as well as the consensus to work together on this. Uh, probably the future would be having the city support us on future grants. And so we'd work with your public works department uh, as, as we move forward on that too. Tolling, always controversial, but these projects wouldn't be here to even talk about if we didn't have that component in here. They went from 1991 to 2010 without the idea of tolling being part of it. They were not moving forward. They were not part of any packages to really move. Uh, we did some work with the legislature on feasibility studies in 2010, uh, 2013, and then that provided a base for the legislature to move forward. So there is about 10% of the funding for this project would come in from direct tolls uh, going forward. If you think about tolls, I, again, I, I know they're controversial, but if we did not have tolls in the state, gas tax would probably have to be about a dime more where everybody across the state would have to pay for that, whether you live in Othello, OMAC, or Olympia. Um, tolling is kind of a user fee. If you don't want to use it, you don't have to. You can still use the routes that you would normally drive today, but if you wanted to use the new facility, you do have the option of being able to, um, to pay for it that way. Um, this is just the roles that we're in. Uh, I bring this up because the state legislature actually authorizes tolls. They've said their intent to have tolls, but this session they have bills that are in the legislature being considered to actually authorize the tolling on these facilities. Uh, the Transportation Commission is a seven-member board appointed by the governor for different terms. They set ferry rates. They set toll rates. Uh, state Treasurer, we work with them on financing and the department. We plan, we build, we operate these facilities. But it comes to point where it starts with the legislature. So I wanted to speak to a couple items there. There's a Senate bill right now on toll authorization that combines author authorizing tolls on the Gateway program as well as 405 and 167 all the way from Puyallup up to Linwood. So it's one bill. Uh, there's been a hearing on that in the Senate. Um, it, it has not come out of committee yet. Uh, these are the aspects for the Gateway. Uh, the toll rates would vary by time of day. They'd be higher during the peaks, lower during the off peaks. Uh, but we want to maintain speed and reliability. We don't want to open a facility and have it congested. So this is one way to make sure that we have speed and reliability on that. Um, we also, any surplus property that we had when building 509 originally, as you know, we had property we purchased through SeaTac and Des Moines. That stays in the program, so we're working with others to sell that off and use that asset to come back into the program. So that's part of this bill, too. It was interesting. The House took that bill and expanded it. And I think the uh, calculus is that um, in order to take a vote for tolling, which might be hard, uh, you need to be able to demonstrate, are you going to get something out of it? So effectively, uh, the Gateway Program would accelerate three years earlier. Instead of completing in 30, 2031, we would complete it in 2028. So they're moving money forward and using tolling to help pay for that. So it advances $129 million. It has some cost savings because if we get projects done earlier, we have inflation savings. We have construction cost savings. So it's actually better. We've had the Treasurer's Office look at this. I think in summary, the Treasurer's Office said, if you can do it faster, cheaper, why wouldn't you do it? So it gives us a good opportunity to advance the project and get the benefits out to those that want to use it um, going forward. That's also had a hearing in Olympia uh, last week, and we kind of wait to see where, where they want to go. 
Um, this is the toll points. Um, there would be one uh, in, on 509, south of the airport. It's only the new lanes are being built, not any of the existing lanes. So if there's existing lanes out there on 509 or I-5, they do not change. And then the new lanes on, a four, on excuse me, 167 and 509 Spur. 167 is that section from Pialp over to 5. 509 Spur happens to be that little section, takes you from 5 over to the Port of Tacoma. There would be a toll point on them. And then we were asked by the legislature to say, could we accelerate the project? And so that was part of what that, that bill that I talked about at the House is being considered. We did do an evaluation uh, and said, as I said, we worked with the Treasurer's Office on this. And uh, what we looked at, I won't go into this too much detail, but we said, well, we have a baseline of what the cash flow would be. We said we could mod modestly accelerate it by two years. We could do a medium acceleration, get three years out of it, or we could really try to maximize the acceleration and get about five years out of it. Case two, medium acceleration seems to be where a lot of folks who support the projects and those that are policymakers are looking at it. But out of that, if we were able to save three years, we actually save $43 million in inflation. We get $109 million of revenue that would not have been realized because it wasn't operating for those three years. Uh, we get 33 million person hours saved because people are now saving trips and they're at time because they now have a new facility to use. And we put that into an economic model, came out with 893 million of economic benefits. And if you bring that, what we call net present value to today's dollars, that was 275 million. So it, the, uh, the business case, you might say, for this acceleration seems to be pretty strong. And this is one way to look at it. The case, the middle graph is case two, medium acceleration three years earlier. There's actually a net benefit of $147 million here. So if you can uh, reduce costs by inflation, you get additional revenue you wouldn't have had, uh, you have, uh, but you have against that some short-term borrowing and, some, and just cost because you're operating the toll facility, you still get a net benefit out of it. So again, from a business model, it made sense to us to, pr to uh, propose this. And the legislature, I think, is, like I said, is considering it. Um, next steps for us, we're waiting for uh, toll authorization from the legislature. Um, we we want to have that before we go to contract because we have to tell our, con our contractors what to build. Uh, we're waiting direction on program acceleration for the legislature. We're waiting on a federal what we call infra grant. That's that $90 million that we submitted. We actually submitted that in March 4th. We hope to hear by summer. Uh, last time we submitted, we were not successful. But out of 116 projects last time that went to Washington, D.C., 47, 47 of them were actually given to the Secretary's office, Secretary Chow. And out of those 47, 20 were selected. So we're in that next 27 group. So hopefully we can still get shortlisted and hopefully we can make it over the hurdle to uh, get support. We have support from both senators. We had five, letters, five congressmen supporting us, including Newhouse and McMorris Rogers from Eastern Washington, because they saw how important it is to their goods and, and their agricultural uh, products getting out to the Asian markets and even to the airport because cherries come in when there's cherry seasons they put them in the bellies of the airplanes and go out to Asia uh, and so it's, time is, is critical to them so we've got cross good cross state support from both parties um, as I mentioned already we have some projects going forward so about a year from now uh, you'll probably start seeing some activity uh, from us out there on the ground and my last slide, a little bit transition here, um, is just all the projects that are, are what we call South Sound area. So uh, Hunga will talk about the Triangle project here, where we're talking about completing it in 2026. But there's other projects here that uh, I thought might be of interest to you, and ones that we've completed already. Some of these are in the Renton area. Um, some of them are down in the uh, Joint Base Lewis McCord area. It kind of gives you a feel for what was in the package and where we stand and what we're being delivered uh, as we go forward with that. So um, I'll probably stop here, see if there's any questions, but I'm also happy to come back after <coughs> Hung speaks too. Council, any questions? Council Member Safadasan. I apologize for being late. I was stuck in traffic. <laughs> um, yes. So with the gateway toll points on 167, I see one on the other side of I-5 and the other one. So how do you how does that work when you're traveling 167 and not exiting on I-5? Yeah, so it's the um, fee structure. Yeah, so basically, um, it's, it's we call it segment tolling. When you drive one segment between Puyallup and I-5, there'll be a charge for that toll. You do the next segment, there'll also be a charge for that toll. Um, 
one thing I'd like to point out to people, though, is when we think about this, we're talking about $180 million of funding for tolling. The 520 bridge was a billion dollars. So the tolls on 520 and the tolls on Tacoma Nose Bridge are much higher than what we're forecasting to be here. Right now, we've been talking about something between 70 cents and $2.75. So say that trip you took, say the first segment was, uh, you know, was the peak period, peak direction. Uh, the first part might be a dollar seventy, and the next part might be a dollar, and it will just show up on show up on your bill, or it will show up on a bill because we don't we don't have toll booths out there. So either you have a good to go account, it will show up there as two dollars and seventy cents for that trip, or you'll get a bill in the mail because we read your license plate, and you'll be two dollars and seventy cents for that particular trip. So how far apart are they going to be? <laughs> um, well, I've kind of go back here a little bit. Oops, excuse me. That whole segment here is six miles from the orange dot to the orange dot. So it's about four miles from Puyallup over to I-5, and it's about two miles from I-5 over. Um, basically, we put them between interchanges. So when you, when you, get, when you go past um, State Route 161 Meridian, there will be no other off-ramps until you get to I-5. And so you will go underneath that gantry on that trip. You can get off at I-5 to go north or go south, or you can choose to continue over towards the Port Tacoma if you're going that direction. But if you do that, you will go through the second gantry. You can get off at a, at a street called 54th Avenue, so 54th will have an interchange, and then you also get off at, at 509. So if you wanted to kind of, kind of come into the south side of Federal Way without doing I-5, you could take that spur over to 54th and then go up to Taylor Way and then go up Marine View Drive and, and back up around that side. Deputy Mayor Honda. Thank you. So why, why don't we have toll booths for these two? Uh... Good question. Good question. Um, toll booths are extremely expensive to operate. Uh, you're paying for land. You're, paying, you're building all that. And then you're paying people 24-7 to be out there to take in a very small percentage of people who would want to pay with cash. 80% of the people will pay with good to go, the little counts. And now that we have basically Tacoma Narrows Bridge, we have 520, 99, 405, 167, 509, it's just becoming part of having an account, you might say, if you want to travel on those facilities. So out of those 80% that use good to go, the 20% who don't, those are coming in to, to just visit, you know, they're passing through, they don't really want to have an account because they're what we do is we just look at their license plate, look up a department license, and they'll send them a bill in the mail. That is much cheaper as an efficiency going forward. So it's kind of like maybe analogy, and I apologize for analogy. Toll booths are a little bit like rotary phones, uh, just really not something that's there. And then if you look at Connecticut, they had a horrific accident there where they had a truck come into the toll plaza and with some fatalities there. So they're not real safe either. So what... Uh, what percentage of the 20 percent don't actually pay the, their tolls? Oh, I think our scoff laws are probably. This is a good question. From the, it's it's probably in under under five percent. We do have an enforcement mechanism though. So once we know your license plate, and if you do not pay, we can actually put a hold in your registration. So when you go to Department of Licensing to re-register that vehicle, you will have to collect it. We started off pretty strict, you might say, uh, back in, uh, when 520 started up. Uh, we've gone to a place where we'll give people an opportunity to, hey, yes, you drove through here, you got the bill in the mail, you contacted us, yes, you're late in paying, you set up a good to go account, we'll, we'll waive the penalties for you, or you pay it, we'll waive it, so it's a, a kind of an education, but we, we, it's basically like a three strikes, you're out. After the third time, then there is, there is a penalty, and that penalty covers our administrative costs and being able to say there's some scoff laws and leakages that come from the system. So what if they're from out of state? Um, good question. Uh, we do not have the ability to put a hold on a out-of-state department licensing or, or DMV type hold there. Our out-of-state trips, though, are really small when you get down to it. They're like 1% or so. Uh, so when you look at that, and then you also look at of the ones that are out state, how many are paying? It's amazing how many will just hey, I'll, I'll do my part and I'll, we'll pay it. Thank you. Councilmember Seven Dawson? I think to piggyback on her question, I, um, when you have the good to go, it's cheaper than 
yes. be without it. And it's because it's attached to your bank account. Yeah, good to go. Good to go is then you're telling us how do you want to pay for it. You can tie it to a credit card. You can tie it to a bank account. You can actually do it by cash, too. You can come into a walk-in center, put cash down on your account. You still have money in your account, and then you can go. But it is. It's $2 cheaper per trip. Right. So it's a big difference to be there to actually have a good to go, which is part of the incentive why so many people will sign up for that. And I think my concern, um, it's, thank you for telling me about the cash option, because I didn't know about that. And I would think that it would adversely impact people who don't have the finances to, Agreed. to travel on that. On that um, so is there any kind of financial um, support right. for people who are low income and just right. can't afford to go back and forth and live in that area? Right. So a couple thoughts on that one. Um, there is a concern of what some people who are unbanked uh, or who don't have the or don't have the resources for that. Um, I've never thought this was a great idea, but you can use your EBT card to pay. So like Tacoma Air's Bridge, but then you're then you're trading off other essential services. Doesn't make sense a lot to me, but it is an option. Um, what's interesting on these particular projects is there's the current routes are right there now. So if you are in Puyallup and you're driving along River Road, River Road will always be there. If you're up on uh, using 509, Highway 99 and First Avenue South are always going to be there. You can use them. And so what happens is the other traffic gets off of those roads, goes onto these roads, and then those other ones are working much better. So therefore, you, ha you, know, you have that choice uh, to be able to use it. Um, so that's, that's one aspect of it that comes into it. There is a bill being thought about and basically Put, put forward, I don't remember the number at this point, that wants the Transportation Commission and the Department to look at, do we have a program that were for lower income, they can get a break on the tolls, and then the question would be, how would you administer that? How would you, do, how would you go forward with doing that? So th that is a question of equity and fairness, I think is, is very important. Um, there's always this trade-off, though, I think, in tolling. A lot of people think it's a very regressive tack or toll, uh, and then, in fact, it is. What's interesting, though, we fund transportation with the gas tax, which is more regressive because everybody's paying whether you're, you're going to be on this route or not. And then we fund transit with sales tax, which is even more regressive because you're paying sales tax on everything, even though you're not even about traveling. So there's this, always this question about how do we pay for transportation and how do we get the benefits out of it and then what's, what's the appropriate way. So those are just some thoughts I'd pass on. Councilor Coping. Yeah, uh, Craig, thanks for your presentation. Now, interstate commerce is one of the drivers for doing these projects. Um, are the tolls that you're describing, do they apply to the trucking companies as well, or are they uh, paying a different fee schedule than the general public? It's a good question. Um, they will, they definitely will be tolled. Uh, the Washington Trucking Association has been briefed, uh, the American Trucking Association, their, their position has always been we don't want to pay more or we don't want to be treated separate, but if you're going to toll everybody, then we'll pay, our, we'll pay our way for it. We went through a process with our committees, our exec committee and our steering committee, to look at a whole number of, like, eight different options of how you might toll. We've, we've kind of narrowed it down to two, uh, and we'll be up to the Transportation Commission to consider this. Across Tacoma Narrows Bridge, 520, trucks pay two to three times more for those tolls. We do it on a per axle basis. So if you have more axles, then we will charge you more. So going across to Comanero's Bridge, you could pay $16 sure. easily to, as a truck going across. And the logic has been, well, trucks provide more damage to Absolutely. facilities than a car would. But then if you're looking at from a space standpoint on the roadway, well, cars take up a lot of space too. So it's kind of how, do you, how would you work with that? What's interesting here, if we're trying to get freight good, reliable speed from, say, a Sumner industrial area to the port or coming across the pass, uh, should trucks be paying two to three times more? And would they not use the facility as much because they'll just stay on River Road or whatever it might be? So there's also been one of the concepts to say maybe trucks pay the same as cars, but not necessarily, they won't, everybody will pay. It's just, it's just that differential. What should that be? And so that would be a, kind of a policy call by the commission as they take up rate setting. Now, I understand that a lot of trucking companies are from out of state. And you've already said the compliance from out of state users has been pretty good. Yeah. Um, but are, are there any good to go requirements for trucking companies to be serviced out of Port of Seattle or Port of Tacoma that you've considered implementing? Not mandatory. 
No, it's, it's kind of a business case. Uh, but uh, realizing if you're making so many trips through this area and you're paying two dollars more per trip, right? Uh, you you definitely are looking at it. The incentivized them, okay. right? All right. And what's interesting, um, those that have fleets very much will get their whole fleet outfitted. But if you're the individual truck driver, time is maybe not that important to you because you have a delivery to make. And you may not necessarily say, I want to go during the peak period. Maybe I'm just going to take another alternate route as long as I can get to my delivery station. So there's different choices based off of their business model. All right. Council, any other questions? Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. I'll forward it here. There we go. Uh, good evening. Um, so the, the, the Triangle project I'm going to be talking about is just basically well, I-5 and 161 and how 18 comes together. Um, so with this project, you know, the, the last time we did a construction work out here was in 2012. Um, and uh, with, with that, with, uh, 2012, we finished the, the, the black, the, the part that's shown here in black. Um, so in 2013, we were, uh, the project was given some money to uh, complete 30% design, update environmental documentations for the orange part, what we call phase two of the projects. Um, so that, that work has already been done. Uh, 2015, we were, we, uh, as part of the Connecting Washington projects, the uh, uh, Connecting Washington funding package, um, the project was uh, allocated $85 million. But um, the first $10 million won't become available until July 2021. So, um, so for the moment, uh, uh, currently there's no activity on, on, the, on the project at this time because we're waiting for that money to become available. Um, so the, the plan, though, is that when, when then that, did I miss something? For some reason, I'm missing a slide here. Um, so. Uh, so w when that money becomes available in 2021, the, 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 the plan is, of course, to, to um, move forward with that orange part. And we, as part of that orange part, um, what we're going to be doing is going to be modifying the, the southbound I-5 off-ramp to Highway 18. Um, so, so we're going to be uh, removing the, the current loop ramp that, that's uh, shown in yellow. Um, and we'll put in a, a signal there so that when we go southbound, or traffic will go down to the, the, the ramp, down to the, to the signal, and then turn left or right uh, in, that, in that blue area. So the, the theory is that with the, um, with the projects, we're moving all the traffic that's going uh, south on 161, pass here on, on a collector distributor with the, with the exit at 356. So, the, so, so that would have less demand here. So with, with this, it would work a lot better. Um, the other reason is that with the uh, existing loop ram, you know, traffic have to slow down to a crawl to, to go down that, that, that loop ram. And then once you get down to the, the, the loop, loop ram, you have to speed up and you have to watch out for t your traffic on Highway 18 to you know, merge in. And then you have to watch out for, for the, the, the traffic from the northbound ramp that merge into Highway 18. So that doesn't work too well. This will work, work a lot better. Um, and then, like I said, the other, the, the other uh, improvement that, that will be made is that uh, southbound I-5 traffic will now be able to get off at 356. Um, there was a modification there at uh, 356 and Highway 161. Um, or the signal that will be removed, and we're going to put in a gigantic roundabout there. Um, it's going to be quite big. Yes, <laughs> uh, and the, the reason is, is, you know, as you know, at that location, there's, there's two signal there that's are really close to each other, literally like 50 feet apart. And so if you have a, a truck trying to, you know, uh, turning uh, and get stuck in one of the, the, um, the red light, it, it literally, it, the tail stick out into the, to, uh, to, to the main lines. Um, and then the, the, the little roundabout there uh, that you can see, um, that going to line up with the uh, 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 road that um, the city has planned that's going to go north in the future. Um, then the, the third piece that uh, we're going to modify is uh, right on 161 and uh, Milton Road. Um, and that location is there you know, because of the roundabout and because of the traffic that, that we're moving past that um, Highway 18 and 161 intersections. 
the traffic is getting down here too much, uh, too fast for the signal to to process. So we have to modify that lake on Twentieth Avenue to uh, um, to allow more more cars to be able to get through during green time, so that we can dedicate more green time on 161 to process the um, the traffic. Um, so the the theory, you know, is that. Um, when, when we're done with that, that work, whatever money left for that $85 million, it's going to go to this, this blue part, which is the northbound uh, off-ramp to Highway 18. Um, the caution here, though, uh, and, and the slides that, uh, for some reason, I, I didn't make it in here, was that there are um, a lot of fish um, uh, covert in, in, in the footprint of these projects. And as, as you know, the, the, the state is um, under a court mandate to remove all those uh, fish barrier, uh, and those will uh, be adding costs to the projects. Um, there's like, I believe uh, there's like six in, this, in, in the footprint, and so at this point we don't know how, how much that cost is going to add to the projects. That's the end of my presentation. <coughs> any questions? Council, any questions? All right, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, now, in regard to uh, this, we have uh, council discussions or questions. Council, anything to uh, add? <coughs> questions, discussions? It's exciting. A lot of, uh, yeah. lot of investment in infrastructure. We very much appreciate uh, the presentations and all this information. Um, so, okay. Uh, hearing none, um, do we have any citizen comment on this? All right. The presentations were so thorough, or, well, we don't have any questions, which is good. Okay. Um, council, anything for the good of the order before a recess, before our regular council meeting? Okay. <clears throat> Cat's got your all tongues. All right. We are in recess until 7 p.m. 6.30 p.m. <laughs>